Hey guys, it's Matt. If you were driving or just listening, you don't need the pictures. I'll describe why I'm even showing the pictures, mostly to highlight the books these guys are having in their academic discussion. Now, I'm just picking this one video out at random to make a greater point. The video, again, you don't need to see anything, don't need to watch the video or anything like that. I'll describe what's going on and the reason why I'm kind of picking on this one. It's The video is called Transhumanism with James Tunney. And the channel that hosted it on February 17th is New Thinking Aloud channel with Jeffrey Mishlove. The entire channel is called New Thinking Aloud with Jeffrey Mish, M-I-S-H-L-O-V-E. Not leaving any links. That can be found rather easily in, in a search. The video is called Transhumanism with James Tunney. I'm not recommending the channel or the video. I'm just using the video. I have to pick one example out to make a greater point. Now, James Tunney is a good guy. He's twice as smart as I am. In terms of academically researched, some people would say, well, Matt, that's not a good thing. That can lead you into a into kind of a box. True, but, but in terms of academically researched, he's 100 times <laughs> um, smarter than me. But again, I agree with you. Sometimes academic research, this might be the problem here, it can lead you into box thinking. Now, this guy's on our side. He said some incredible things about getting in touch with spiritual self. I've heard him in other interviews. Overall, this James Tunney is someone I support and somebody I generally feel is on our side. I don't know a whole lot about Jeffrey Mishlove. I'm going to pick on these channels a little bit because it's just to me, it might be like, although I haven't listened that much, but it might be like Buddha at the gas pump. You know that channel, Buddha at the gas pump? Even Aaron Abke. These are very, very, very smart um, mystics and, and, and big thinkers and uh, great advice on getting in touch with spiritual self. But how do they – I don't understand how they ignore the beyond the 800-pound gorilla in the room, the – what I call the not milk, the screen, the sense of evil that stands behind it and what the very simple goal of that not milk or the entire system acting as one, its, its goal can be described in really in no other way as evil, even if that evil was put here on purpose so we learn a lesson. These channels never address it. There's an 800-pound gorilla sitting next to you guys. And I'm not, again, I'm not picking in any way on James Tunney, a good guest, a very smart person who is absolutely on our side trying to do the right thing. But as smart as he is, I think he's missing uh, a big piece of this. And the part that these channels and these people are missing is so simple. It's so simple. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. So for anybody that is watching the video every I don't know, 25 or 30 seconds or so, I'm flashing a different image of the speaker and the host, but the books that they're talking about and their highly academic discussion on transhumanism. Um, in this New Thinking channel, every time James mentions a book or a Arthur C. Clarke reference or something like that, he inserts the book, and that's, that's a, a nice feature. But the amount of books I'll show you, it's not probably just about half of all the books they discussed and all the books they, they flashed up, shows you this high-level intellectual conversation they're having about transhumanism. What is it? What's the underlying goal of it? And it's, you know, guys, it, they, they miss the boat. It's very simple. It's very simple. But these channels don't go here. Boot at the gas pump and these, they, these, these big thinkers come on and they, the 800-pound gorilla is sitting right next to them stealing their bananas. But they don't see it somehow. The goal of transhumanism, oh, it's like three or four sentences. It's very simple. But see, they miss the back end. They probably understand the front end. They would say, oh, I agree with you there, but they'd miss the back end. The goal of transhumanism, Ray Kurzweil, the singularity, all this crap, Google Glass, implants, put a chip in your hand so you don't have to unlock the door. It's very simple. It's to further reduce a human being down to a certain level that separates that real spiritual person from their spiritual self. It's just spiritual self to most people is like five miles away. And as transhumanism comes in, then spiritual self will be 10 miles away and get to a point where they won't ever be able to find it. They're probably already at a point. People are look or look around where people will never find the part of themselves that's not here. 
is the is the best way I like to put it. The simplest way of of putting it is a part of yourself that's not in the body. Consciousness is probably not even confined to being in the body, just just coming from the brain. Yet yeah, no, I mean it's so obvious that's all we are is not confined in this body, this avatar. So the part that's not here. Okay, the transhumanism is simple. The, the purpose of all this stuff is simple. These guys miss it. It's first grade, man. It's it's to separate a real human being from spiritual self. So as usual, these guys fall into the trap to try to understand something that is as simple as two or three or four sentences. If you truly step back far enough and see what's going on in this plane of existence, and they try to have an academic discussion. They'll talk about, uh, there's five minutes of the the conversation about uh, the books or the works of J.D. Burnell, B-E-R-N-A-L. Most people have never heard of J.D. Burnell. But one of these scientists, like Arthur C. Clarke, transhumanists, um, having a conversation about how Ultimately, society, these people, see, then they'll have the conversation kind of from a, a neutral perspective. These people think that science, it should be left in control. Science should be above politicians and those in power, those elected into office. And science should dictate the way society goes. And But, but, but these guys don't understand that whatever is animating these people and their ideas – there are minions of something else, of something greater, and, and I don't mean great, meaning a better sense, just a larger sense. There are minions putting forth ideas that essentially they're carrying out the will of something else, an underlying evil that in every case is out to separate a true human being from its spiritual self. Talk about Arthur C. Clarke saw society evolving into this, and then James will say, our big institutions have failed us. no. None of the, he talks about the church and the governments and the schools. No big institution has failed anybody. It was designed by this system that stands in the shadows that you can't see to remove a human being from a spiritual self. Here we go, back to the same sentence. These systems haven't failed anybody. They're doing exactly what they were designed to be and to do. The evil genius of the system is the tens of millions of people involved in different levels of government, in all different levels of academia, in uh, corporations. Almost none of them are in on it. They're not getting secret marching orders. They're doing, in fact, what they think is right. The corporate executive believes wholeheartedly in Adam Smith's capitalism and they're doing exactly what's best for, for liquidity. The stockbroker believes in liquidity. They're an altruistic soul providing liquidity. They're all doing exactly what the system itself would want them to do that ends up putting society in a position where it separates a human being from its spiritual self without anybody being in on it. It's evil genius and in the extreme – is those people in these academic institutions, even some absolute monster like J.D. Burnout, um, J.D. Burnout, he might not have been in on it. He might have said, J.D., I'd like to interview you. Come over here for a second. Are you under some sort of mind control working for an evil cabal that's animated by an evil screen and which is outside human perception? J.D. Burnout would say, what did you just say to me, boy? Are you in one of my classes? You realize there's a psych ward on campus, boy? In one stroke of my pen, I could put you in that psych ward? Put your GPA to 0, 0.0 like Blutarski? Even monsters like J.D. Burnell. You look into, you know, read his books. You want a monster. They don't, they're not in on it. They're not having backroom conversations and giving their marching orders and being served tea and crimpets. Now, an Arthur C. Clarke, a creepy bloke of that level, when you get people at that level, oh, yeah, you might be in some, some back rooms that you and I wouldn't want to go to. But but the evil genius of this system is J.D. Burnow, all of them would pass a lie detector test. They would think they're just trying to help and improve society, not being animated or driven to have certain views by something that stands in the shadows. They think that's crazy. See, scientism, that you know, politicians can make mistakes. If you believe everything in the hands of science – 
it evolves a human being away from their spiritual self, devolves, separates themselves. These people are carrying out the wishes of the not nilk in every case, but they're not aware of it. And it's not hard to see. The all of society is engineered so people get have the worst emotions they throw it into the ether uh, anxiety fear worry email supposed to help everybody and save everybody a million hours of time introduced in the early 90s it just cost everybody a million hours of time these smart academic types they don't see it you know just just bring the 7-Eleven job application, that event into the conversation, things are so e the evil that you have to – oh, that was just that. The, the, those that did whatever in 2001, they wouldn't have their hands in how society is, is evolving. They wouldn't – they would just let society evolve naturally. They wouldn't have their hands in an election, would they? They would just let the people vote. Once something so big happens – I said this to my uncle who is uh, one of the smartest people, sees a lot of truth – but he is a 100% believer in what the news tells him about C, 100% that the Los Angeles medical facilities are overflowing and all this stuff. And I said to him, I said in an email, an email never works. I said, you, you know, we talked about this 10 years ago. You clearly saw or filled out the 7-Eleven job application. You saw every bit of it, just like I did. And I told him, I said, once you see that, you have to factor that into every part of society. It's not like... Oh, you know they're going to do that, <laughs> but then they're going to leave every uh, the other parts of society alone. Oh, they're just going to let people vote. No, once something that big happens, then you have to assume that whatever was able to influence that that massive monumental event that changed the way of life on Earth, then you have to assume that that power also has its sticky fingers in everything. In government, in academia, education, corporations. The, the, so they're going to do that, whatever was that powerful and that influential in 2001. Then they're just going to let people vote because there's a constitution here and we can't meddle in that. No. Once you have Dracula to dinner, that kind of changes the dynamics of the dinner party. Whether you have 10 or 15 or 20 guests. Who's who's down the end there? I am uh, Lord Dracula. We have Dracula at dinner? So you can just go on and conduct a normal dinner party after that? Are you being discriminatory against Dracula? No, no, no. Let's just have karaoke as normal and pass out the, the chips and salsa. What, see, once you have Dracula at dinner, everything changes. Once you fill out the 7-Eleven job application in 2001, everything, your entire perspective on everything needs to incorporate that. Academic dummies, forget this simple shit. Sorry. It's like the headless cab driver. It's like the headless cab driver. Let's go back to that. Once you observe, in you get in a certain cab, and the cab driver, in this case, doesn't remove his head. The head is on the seat smoking a cigarette, and the body just drives. Once you experience that, it's not isolated to just that. The whole cab company is probably suspect. And then the government or the local governments that gave the medals to those cab companies, if that even still exists with Uber and all this bullshit, then everything is suspect. It's not just that one incident. So you have to bring 7-Eleven into a conversation about transhumanism. You can't, but do these guys, don't? they're not aware, the New Thinking Channel, are they aware of even half or one-tenth of this evil structure that we see that world wars were cooked up on both sides and most of these, maybe they miss all of it. In that case, you're just going to confine your conversation to academia, but... I don't think James misses that. So you can't forget this. You have to incorporate that into everything you are observing. Even if you come back to the guy's place that hosted the original dinner party with Dracula, and he has another one like a month later. But this one, there's everybody's normal. There's no Dracula. The fact that he had Dracula in the last dinner party, it means you can't just go through the night as, as every, everything's normal. <laughs> Dracula was at the last dinner party. Do you understand? Okay, let me clarify who I'm picking on here. If you have these touchy-feely channels, some would call New Age, mystics, big thinkers, spiritual stuff, if these people come on and all their guests and the hosts, and I don't know intimately the host at, at boot at the gas pump, if all these people from the host's perspective and the guest perspective, they all believe that Buzz Cauldron 
walked around and played basketball on the moon. They all believe that it was just um, you know guys with box cutters. If they believe every one of these events that's on the news was completely real, if they believe that there was no um, sinister uh, powers that cooked up the world wars and it just World War One was just because of uh, nationalism associated with the shooting of an Archduke Third Man, if they just believe everything that comes out of the the Encyclopedia Britannica in the news, then I guess I, I – well, I'm, you know, I'm sorry they're missing everything, but most people miss everything. So I'm not going to be that upset. I'm talking about the channels that know some of these things, that know uh, – obviously have a, have a sense that what went down in 2001 – is not what was said or, or, or what is believed um, or accepted belief by most people today, which is just absolutely amazing. I'm getting on these channels like, well, you have to incorporate that, guys, and they don't usually. This guy, Aaron Abke, in terms of some of his spiritual philosophies, this guy is brilliant. He's brilliant. Now, I don't know. Maybe they do miss everything that we see. Maybe they believe that... Neil's arm and his strong was on the moon and they I don't I don't think they do though. I think they see a lot of the obvious fake things that we see, but they never incorporate it into their touchy feely discussions. This is my big my big beef with it. I guess what I'm saying is they're too smart in teaching very sound spiritual lessons because I've listened to a lot of this. It's very very good advice. They're too smart there to be missing it over here. And if they're missing everything that we see, all the basic things that we see, um, you know, it's very normal and common for parents the next day after a little one uh, gets, you know what, to just come take a, a smiling podium and give a, why even at the podium anyway? <laughs> what are you even doing the interview for? They do all these interviews the next day. Well, why are you even doing the interview, let alone smiling, laughing and giggling and not, not crying? So I guess it's pretty basic. If you don't see the basics that we crazies in this crazy side of YouTube and the truth community, you don't see this fake event and that fake event, and this is completely contrived, and that is completely rigged, and society's engineered over here, and the stock market really shouldn't be 30000 when the whole world of economy is getting flushed and whole industries are going down. If you can't see this basic stuff, then you probably shouldn't be given any spiritual advice. Teacher puts himself forth. He's going to be the calculus professor and wants to one day be the head of the math department at uh, Cambridge University. If you can't do two plus two, then you're probably not going to be the head of the math department at Cambridge University. The shit that we see is so obvious or should be so obvious to anybody giving any sort of spiritual coaching. I'll understand why. The NPCs around me or the people I interact with, the people I went to high school with or whatever, they just want to uh, you know, yell and scream at Tom Brady in the Super Bowl or whatever and root for their Patrick Mahomes. I, mean, I understand they're going to miss it. They're going to miss it. But they ain't running around giving spiritual advice, are they? So I guess for all these spiritual channels and Ascension channels and level up channels, there should be like a – you know. I can't I don't know what I can say. I don't, I don't want the, the uh, video banned as some sort of primate beach. But um, there should be a little test, a little test, you know, where, wait, before you give me spiritual advice or you're going to conduct a channel on spiritual advice and leveling up and 5D ascension, all that, do you realize here, here's a guy, look, this guy here is approaching a podium. Um, in, in a, I, I can't even say the state. <laughs> the video might be labeled. Here's a guy approaching a podium. He lost somebody yesterday. Okay. And, oh, here comes a smile. Look, oh, here comes a laugh and smile like somebody told a good knock knock joke. Do you think that's possible? Well, I'm giving spiritual advice, and Matt, I want to point out to you that people react differently to grief, and they react differently to very tragic situations. This could have been just a natural emotion where he smiles like somebody told a knock-knock joke instead of crying and showing puffy eyes and a nose that's the size of Bozo the Clowns because of crying all night. See, people react differently. No, they don't act differently with that sort of tragedy if it were real because of crying all night long. Their eyes would look like Arnold Schwarzenegger's eyes when they started bugging out when he got his helmet cracked in Total Recall. So in summary, touchy-feely channels, spiritual ascension channels, 3D to 5D channels, leveling up channels, love the message overall, and some really great advice I've taken away from many of these channels overall. But you need to start incorporating the 800-pound gorilla in the room, the engineered society that has done a lot of 
millions and millions of little things over the years, but have pulled off monster events like the 7-Eleven job application, like what's happening now, and done it in a way that's so obvious that anybody should be able to see it. So it, not only is it suspect, you suspect, not only is it, is it suspect that none of the, the type of conspiracy or the dark element that we see in this crazy side of YouTube is rarely or never mentioned by these sorts of channels, one has to conclude that if you don't see it, then you shouldn't be given any spiritual leveling up ascension advice for one to represent themselves as the sous chef for Gordon Ramsay. One needs to be able to open a can of Campbell's chicken soup and serve it up at the right temperature. It ain't that hard. If you can't open a Campbell's chicken soup, you ain't going to be no sous chef. And for those that didn't hear me right, I didn't say soup chef. Sous chef is a very prestigious thing, assistant to head chef, not soup chef. So that's where we are. And um, we'll look at these. I would say, guys, you, you watch any of you guys watch these channels, and a lot of you do. If they're not incorporating some of the basics that I'm talking about here, uh, I'm sorry. What what how how how, do, how can you miss it? And look, and if they're screaming at me, going, "Well, you guys go too far. Everything's evil. Everything's sinister." You know what? they would be right. This community does go too far at times. But where we may meet in the middle with these Ascension people is the evil by itself is not the end all be there. It's playing a role here. It's playing a, it has a limited a power inside this snow globe, which is a, just a tiny, tiny part of all that is. It's very uh, possible, if not probable, that the evil here is simply playing a role. Not that the evil here wants to actually help us. It wants to help itself, but it was put here by something much greater than itself to play a role to help in our personal ascension. So from that aspect alone, these touchy-feely channels should be looking at the evil to see how it helps spiritual ascension. Anyway, guys, you understand the point I'm making at this point.